Hi, everyone. I am so excited for you to meet my guest for today. Her name is Christy Simmons, and we have just met recently, but I I loved everything about her podcast and everything I was seeing on social media before she even reached out to me. And it was really fun because the day that she did, I was actually looking at her stuff thinking, I love this girl. I don't know her, but I love everything. And all of a sudden I get this message that she was like, Hey, we need to know each other. So it was so fun. And I, one of the things I didn't know this about her until we started talking, but she is a former educator. And so maybe there was some vibe there that I was noticing that, that I didn't know at the time. And probably she told people that in some of her stuff, but as I was just, it was just like, I saw her and I thought, okay, I'm connected to this person. So it's so fun. But she has a, a coaching, a teen coaching business for confidence, which I love because, oh my gosh, I needed that so bad when I was a teen and really all teens and a lot of adults need that too. So I'm not going to talk a lot about her. I'm going to let her do that. But I just want you to know that again, there's people in this world that you can contact and connect to and people that want to help teens. So Christy, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Cynthia. I'm so grateful to be here. I love listening to all that. And I especially love that you shared our little story of how we connected because it is, it's, it really is. It kind of felt like the universe had something um, or was at hand in that in some mm -hmm. way, shape or form. So I wanted to share with you also that I love your key messaging, like around your podcast. And when I found you, especially when I thought of like that idea of like the teen anxiety maze, because this is really what I think I felt like when I was a teen. I really didn't know back then how to think about what I was thinking about, but I definitely know that I felt so scattered in my life. Had I known back then that it was actually just a time to explore and just surrender to that, it would have made my life so much easier. And so the tools and the skills that I teach to teens today are essentially just that, those that I needed back then. So yeah, now, as a teen life coach, as you said, I was a former educator. I taught in the field of education for just over 12 years. I left at the beginning of this year, and now I just empower youth with those essential life skills and also emotional intelligence to help support them along their journeys as well, because I have recognized that it is so essential to teach them this. This wasn't something, and it isn't something that we teach in the traditional school system, at least not yet. I'm hoping that one day it'll catch up, but until it does, I just knew that because this has been such a, it has had such a big impact on my life and it has been so life-changing for me. I just knew that I had to make it like my mission to be able to provide this information and to teach it to others. And so one of my gifts I've noticed for sure over the last year, almost close to two years of doing this is that because of my background in teaching, I feel, and I'm sure maybe you feel the same way too, Cynthia, but I feel like we're able to see those expectations, those goals that our clients have, and then reverse engineer that, right? To be able to co-create with them those steps that they're going to need in order to get there. And I feel like sometimes that's the piece that's really missing for them is just not being able to see, like, how can I, or how do I, or how do I pivot out of this situation? How do I build that resilient resilience to face this challenge? and show up for myself. So I really just love to help them tap into that, tap into their desires, their emotions, helping to teach them how to manage it. And yeah, I feel like when we build all of this with them on a foundation of self-worth, this will just help them have such a brighter future because I can already feel that, you know, for myself and for the clients that I work with as well. Mm -hmm. I love that. Today I had a client and it was her last session. So I was just asking her, you know, like, what was your favorite part and what was really helpful to you? And, and she said, my favorite part was that every week I could come and tell you all the stuff that was happening with me. And you just helped me. Like it was almost like we put it out on a table and I could just see all the things and then I could just put it together and we'd problem solve it together. And I hadn't ever even thought of what I do like that before, but I was like, that's exactly what I do because we need to have things reflected back to us sometimes by a neutral party, somebody who isn't, isn't so in love with us that they're sort of blinded by that. You know, they're just like there to help us see what is the next step and what should we do. And she said, I think I might have to come back to you, you know, when school starts, because I'm going to need to like unpack the stuff that's happening in school and what can I do about it and how do I problem solve it? So I thought that was cool that that's, that's what she took away from it because it kind of helped me to see 
you know, and I'm sure you're doing the same thing with your clients, help me to see it. I'm like, oh yeah, that's exactly what I do. Yeah. And those aha moments can be so powerful. And that's where I recognize though, that everybody learns so differently, but especially for me. And I feel like we were talking about this before you hit record. I feel like I do. I attract similar clients to like the ways in which I needed to learn things. Like maybe Mm -hmm. it's something to do with my messaging, but I almost feel like I am attracting my teen self through the work that I do. And definitely I was a very visual learner. So I feel like incorporating even like art and stuff like that into my services has also been a really, really powerful tool for a lot of the clients that I work with. I love it. So your podcast is the confident teen. So do you mostly work on confidence or, or what are some of the other types of things that you do? So interestingly, background in education, I'm going to take you back just a little bit, but I didn't want to go. I mean, the whole journey would take us a while to go on (laughs) because there's a lot to unpack in there. But if we're just specifically talking about, you know, my career as a teacher and then moving to life coaching, I just, I seen confidence again, visually in my mind, I was able to actually go back and reflect on what I had changed on my own personal development journey, which all happened. As I said before, I left teaching uh, just at the beginning of this year. So through that journey, I was able to create essentially my confident teen program. So if I could speak to my teen self, what would she need to hear? I feel like that's always been at the core of everything. And so, yes, I focus primarily on helping teens to cultivate confidence so they can step into adulthood, back into school in September, like whatever the case may be, Mm -hmm. feeling more empowered. And so confidence is definitely like the core theme But I feel like through all of that, I was reflecting on how I had actually started to really build my confidence and there was much more to it. So what I do with my clients is I take them on a journey where they're first starting with, you know, understanding the foundation, which is our self-worth and that, you know, just that, that inherent worth is there and that you are enough just as you are. So helping them to understand that because that is not an understanding that I had as a teen. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it's an understanding that a lot of teens still don't have. It's something Mm -hmm. that is overlooked. And so I really focus on that first. And then I start to focus on the four key areas that I believe can help other people to cultivate confidence as well. So we tap into their desires is one of the key areas. So really just getting, getting to know that authentic self and who they truly are, what their goals are, their visions are, their dreams, things like that. And then we move to like all the feelings that they experience. So the emotional piece of this, so teaching them about emotional regulation, teaching them how to understand what that energy feels like in their body, how to talk to their emotions, to be able to still, I remember you saying this on my podcast and we recorded yesterday, but still being able to go out there in the world and, and, and do the things that they want to do not feeling like this, this emotion is something that needs to hold them back because it doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm speaking in general, definitely there are always cases where if they need to seek other supports, yeah, Mm -hmm. that's always encouraged. Um, But yeah, just in terms of like everyday emotions and challenges we face, which is the next key area. um, Those are things that we can learn how to regulate ourselves and we can learn what works best for us to help us to move through that. So I do help them in the next key area with how they can face challenges in order to build resiliency and grit. Um, And then we also have an area where we do work on like their time management and planning Mm -hmm. and just like looking and breaking down the actual, actual like inventory of what a day looks like for them and showing them how by, you know, slowly changing their habits and habit stacking they can create that consistency and that momentum starts to build motivation. And then they feel more confident because they are actually like starting to connect and align their life um, around these four key areas. And it it really does help them to feel more empowered in their lives. Mm -hmm. So yeah, each area has like activities and lessons. And as I was saying before, breaking it down into a language that they're able to understand is my gift. So I feel like I bring art into that. If they're interested in hockey or dance or other things, like I try to utilize that in order to deliver the information in a way that they're going to be able to integrate. Oh, I love it. And this (laughs) reminded me of one of the reasons why I also struggled as a teen was I didn't realize I had control over so many things. I just felt like all these adults are controlling me. The world is controlling me. School is controlling me. 
And I just felt trapped and angry because that's I didn't. Yeah. You just said there that makes, that's what dang, the anxiety maze would be defined as for me. That's what I felt like back then. You just described it. Sorry to cut yeah. you off. I just want no, to No, that. that's beautiful because then that makes me think, I wonder if that's, you know, I didn't realize that, but maybe that's kind of where that name came from for me was that I mm. was thinking about it like that. But I, I could, I, I still don't think I knew until. I don't know, mid life almost that I had a lot of control over what was going on. Like I was creating my life and I was pretty good about doing that. Like, I don't think I've ever thought of myself as the victim of my life, at least in my adult life, but I really took control over directions that I wanted to go later on. And so I'm teaching teens too. Like you, there's so much you get to control, even though it doesn't feel like it, even though you thought you didn't. And it sounds like that's what you're doing too. Yeah. That's beautiful. You made me that. So that just made me think of the empowerment dynamic, which is a tool that I also utilize in my services, but definitely bringing it down to a level that they can understand. But it does, it talks about the roles that we play in our life and how you can be the victim or the creator. And there's Mm -hmm. other roles in that, but we mainly focus on those two, just so it gives them like that clear understanding of the contrast Mm -hmm. and, you know, what choosing one looks like versus choosing the other, the actions that you will take from those roles and those places in your life. And then the reality that it creates for you. And I'm constantly reminding myself of this, which is why Mm -hmm. I think I love doing this work so much, because this is still something that I need to practice consistently every single day. But once you start doing it and you actually see the effects of the reality that you are starting to create just by, like I said, slowly chipping away at these goals or these desires that you have for yourself, it's incredible when you look back weeks, months, years, you're like, I can't can't believe the person that I have become, but it's because Mm -hmm. of the work that you're putting in. Well, and I like the idea of focusing on more small goals or habits because Mm -hmm. when I used to want to change my life in different ways, I would be like this all or nothing person. Like I'm going to go a hundred percent in on this crazy plan where I'm not going to sleep for days because I'm going to do all these things. And I could do that for a couple of days or whatever, but I would always fall off of it because it was like, oh, well, this is too hard. And then instead of thinking, well, I just made it too hard and I need to make it smaller, I would just scrap the whole thing. And so you're teaching how you can do it in a way that doesn't overwhelm you and yet it still works. Yeah. And about putting yourself first too, like really understanding that at the end of the day, like self-trust is really, really important. And it's something that can be built much younger, I feel like, than I got to experience it. And Mm -hmm. I think that's why I do the work that I do. No matter if there's not like this incredibly massive transformation that happens, like those seeds are still being planted. Those seeds are still Mm -hmm. being planted for me as well. Like I work with a coach and I feel like every day she's teaching me something new. I gain a new perspective and it just helps me to go further, deeper, expand myself wider, like in my life. So I just feel like there's so much value in just being able to experience like conversations and coaching, for example, with people who have done the work and now are offering um, that support to others. Mm -hmm. I love that. So when parents reach out to you to work with their teen, how do they go about that? So Normally, I feel like people are listening to the podcast. Most of the time, they're just coming in through referral. So they've already, they already know of somebody who has, you know, their team has worked with me, but we normally just jump on a first connection call to figure out, you know, what supports they're looking for. I always like to make sure that, you know, it's a good fit and that it's aligned because definitely, as we were saying earlier, like that connection, you can already feel if it's there or not. And if you're going to be able to build that trust with the teen, because that's the most important piece. They need to Mm -hmm. feel like safe, seen, heard, and understood um, in order, I feel like, for this co-creation to work, because that's what coaching is, right? It's helping them to explore, it's guiding them, it's, it's asking them the right questions in order for them to find the answers. Like, it's really all about critical thinking as well, right? So it builds that skill, which is really important. But at the end of the day, it's on them to take the action. Mm -hmm. So that's a really, really important piece. And just knowing that, you know, it's going to have to be like that team effort, like the coach is there to support, but it's also, it's, it's everybody that really needs to be on board with this. But once, 
that decision is made, it is pretty incredible. The magic can happen. Yes, definitely. How much are the parents involved in what you're doing? Because you're a teen coach, such as I am. I don't coach parents. So how are parents involved in your program? I would say definitely, like I said, the accountability, making sure that they help them on their end just to like manage that schedule, make sure that they're checking in with their sessions whenever they have them and and any follow-ups that are needed. But honestly, yeah, I just, I work one-on-one with the teens. I do reflect and reviews with my parents just to, you know, readjust, realign. I mean, I, I offer that same advice to my clients, you know, to make sure that we're constantly checking in, making sure that we don't need to pivot in certain areas, like taking inventory constantly and consistently. So I feel like it's that's the same relationship that I have with the parents because their teen is growing and changing. And we know we face challenges almost like cyclically in our lives if you actually start to pay attention to that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's always like, I always felt that way as a teacher too, right? Like I remember at the beginning of the day, and this wasn't actually an an idea that I had, somebody else gave me this idea, but I was so grateful. Somebody at the beginning of the day just mentioned like have some kind of like routine where when your kids come in right in the morning, like they either set a color on their desk or something, right? And that would just show like their mood for the day, like how they were feeling when they got there in the morning. So if they put like a little like blue pom pom on their desk, like you knew that they were kind of sad that morning Mm. or red or you know what I mean? So it kind of gave you that. that initial. Yeah. But then they didn't have to like speak that to you. It's just, it was a visual for you and for their Mm -hmm. friends just to be able to say, Hey, like my friend over there is. Yeah. And I feel like that has, like, that has always helped me with the way that I approach, like the work with my clients as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've had people get on their call where they're like, I just had a big fight with my mom. Like they're still coming down from, you know, something really tough. And so I just give them the space to sit there for a while or cry or complain about it or, you know, whatever it is that they they need to do. And I love that as a, when I was a teacher, I was a special education teacher, which of course, emotions were a big part of everything that we did just because that told you what kind of day you were going to have, like what their emotion was. That's probably what it was going to be that day. And I don't, I never, I didn't have anything really concrete like that, that I could have used, but I think I had such a small group that I could kind of gauge it by And I had some of the kids all day long and some of them I didn't, you know, it just depended on what their disabilities were. But yeah, I I would have loved to have had something like visually that I could see and other kids could see because I think that's important too that they know, oh, my, these other classmates don't really want to be bothered right now (laughs) or whatever. They want to be quiet. And so I'm going to put, go ahead. Oh, I I was just going to say quickly, I love that you brought up energy there for a second. Mm. I heard you say something about energy and I was going to mention too, that I feel like that's another big part of this. Like you said, like sometimes you can just feel like you just know. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's a really important piece of this too is, and I feel, I feel this way even when I talk to you. So I'm sure your clients do, but when I get on a call with you, like the last one we had yesterday and now today we do, I feel like both of us together are like raising our vibration, right? You start to match up to that. So Mm -hmm. when you're connecting with these teens, just being able to give them back that energy of possibility, which I know that you do too with your clients is huge. So Mm -hmm. that's a really big part of this as well. And that can be transferred Mm -hmm. through Zoom. Yes, I know. I I kind of wondered about that, but it is so true that it does. does. And that, that made me feel happy because I thought I really want to do this for people across the United States or even the world. And I thought, I'm so used to someone being physically with me as I talk to them or whatever. I wondered what it was going to be like, but it's been just as amazing doing it this way. I do miss the in-person, but I have a few people that I see in person sometimes so that are in my area. So that's kind of fun. Well, I'm going to put all of your stuff in my show notes so people can go to your podcast, they can go to your website, all the things. Now, do you have resources or something on your website? I don't remember or just like different things that people can. Definitely. If you go to my website, they'll be able to see like program breakdown, kind of like a key topic that I basically mentioned here. They'll be able to find there. There's also like the links for my podcast. There's a lot of free value there. Mm. I have a lot of guests, including yourself, but there's many episodes. We're getting upwards to like a hundred episodes now. And I've had a lot of like guest experts on 
in just a range of fields that yeah can help with yeah numerous things if you're looking for support with your teen and what else did I want to mention? I don't know when this podcast is going to go live. So this might not be applicable, but still you could just check it out anyway, because there could be stuff coming up in the future. But next Friday, I'm hosting a workshop for back to school prep week. Um, mm. So I'll provide you with that link if people want to check that out and sign up if it's not too late. <laughs> yeah, well, live. I can put it in my newsletter if, not, if nothing else, because I am kind of awesome. behind on when these are going to come out. But Another thing that I was going to say about that is what do you do when you do workshops or different things like that? Is there ever a place where they're kind of housed where people can watch them at another time? Or do you give them like the, the, at different times, like if they can't do this one, they could do one three months from now or something like that. Yeah. I mean, definitely follow along too. probably the best place. Like the one place that I'm most active is on Instagram at confident Mm -hmm. teen teacher. So that's probably the best place that you can find out, but I'm always collaborating with different people. So right now, like knowing when the next workshop is, I'm not too sure, Sure. but this one in particular, it's more of just like, there's um, a very small cost for this. Like it's actually five days worth of workshops with different people. And I'm just one of the guests Mm -hmm. that's going to be doing a workshop on how to cultivate confidence um, with your teen and creating like a back to school blueprint. So that Mm -hmm. is my role in all this, but yeah, there'll definitely be more to come. So if you follow me, you'll be able to hear about that. Oh, that's wonderful. I love that. Well, I am so glad that you are my guest and that we just know each other. That's my most exciting part is that I I get to know you. Is there anything else you want to share with teens, parents, anybody that might be listening? Yeah, I just think if you are listening to this, you are already taking a step in the right direction towards creating change in your life. You have found a gem in Cynthia. I'm so grateful for you and for the work that you're doing. And if there's anything that I can do to support you, to help remind you that you are enough, to help remind you that you can feel empowered and confident in your lives, I would just encourage you to reach out to me. And I always say this at the end of my podcast, so I'm going to say it here, but it's be brave, trust yourself and take action. If you repeat Mm -hmm. that to yourself as often as you can, it can really start to create some new ways of thinking, some new ways of being, and then yeah, the changes that you're looking for. Mm, that's perfect. I love it. Well, I am so glad you were my guest and I will definitely be following all the things that you're doing. Thank you.